Hi, we're developing a new range of gear flow meters for customers who need to measure lower flows on their hydraulic system with a high degree of accuracy and repeatability. We're mainly targeting hydraulic test stand applications across a range of industries, which could be for aerospace ground support applications or hydraulic component leak testing, but these are also good for lubrication monitoring and because they're stainless, they could also be for both onshore and offshore use. The smaller models could easily be put into a kit for mobile diagnostic testing if needed. These products are still under development but due out in the next three to six months. We wanted to give you a sneak preview and go behind the scenes where Mark, our project engineer in charge, can show you more. Once you've watched this video, please get in touch. We'd love to hear what you think. Well, Martin, we've got the product range is um, going to be in three different sizes. Um, small, medium and large um, and the idea was to cover up to about 150 litres um, and the smallest one, which is this one, the easiest one to, uh, to look at, that's going to go from 0 0.1 litres per minute to uh, 25 litres a minute. Uh, the next one in the range is a uh, medium sized one here and that is uh, 0.5 litres to 70 litres a minute. And then the larger one, which we can, which we can move about, it's not, it's not too cumbersome, um, but that uh, range is from 5 litres to 150 litres a minute. And all the units are in 303 stainless steel, um, including the wetted parts, so they're um, pretty resilient to most fluids and chemicals. They are going to have um, output threads, we're going to fit um, adapters to them, rather than have empty ports. We're going to have um, uh, BSP adapters, or um, the range of male jig adapters. So you can see here we've got the jig, jig ones on here, BSPs. And for the range of meters, we are going to provide several options of outputs. We're going to have a, a milliamp output, um, which comes from these transducers, um, and a frequency output as well. Um, the customer can choose. Um, and they choose the time of purchase, or they're going to choose once they've got it. Um, it's best to choose the type of purchase, uh, time of purchase. Um, it's not easy to, for, well, it's not really practical for a customer to change it once they have it, because you need a special programming adapter. Um, and a CAN version is in the pipeline also. So the milliamp stroke frequency ones will come out first and then the CAN ones? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct, yes. Um, we're aiming to release the milliamp uh, stroke frequency uh, product by the end of the year. Um, later on, it's going to take probably another three months to release the CAN, so we're probably looking around about April 2016 for the CAN version. So, so December time for frequency milliamp and then April time? For yes, time. yes. And why, why go for those outputs? Why not go for volts or, or some other type of output? Um, milliamp is far more resilient in industrial environments. Uh, frequency is fairly resistant in industrial environments, especially this kind of type of frequency, it'll be a TTL compatible output. <coughs> um, and it can be a higher pulse as well. It's an open collector output, so depending where you put your pull-up um, resistor to, you can have TTL or you can have a pulse output up to the supply voltage if you like. So you've got a high level of um, signal there, so it should be very robust in most environments. And why, um, what's the importance of the CAN one? The CAM one, um, well that'll, that ties in very well with WebPEX range of um, uh, meters, uh, HPM type meters. Um, they read out some data logic. Yes, yeah, read out, yeah. Um, they, it'll directly connect to, uh, to those meters and be auto sensing, so it'll set up the meter with the appropriate sensor, or flow meter calibration details. Um, the customer doesn't have to worry about anything, um, it's just plug and play. Um, and away they go. Um, yeah, th there's no setting K factors or setting calibration data. So other features of the products and uh, the way we were trying to go with the, the range is to cover as many fluids um, and areas of use as possible, hence the reason for stainless steel and the wetted parts being stainless. We're also looking at the sealing methods, um, particularly the O-ring seals that go inside the body, the, the, the wetted seals. Um, to either have one seal to cover almost all eventualities for our customers 
or have a, um, uh, a range of seals that customers can choose. So at the moment we're looking at um, nitrile seals which cover most hydrocarbon hydraulic fluids and um, water glycol solutions and for some of our customers who use Skydrol then we can um, specify EPDM seals. Um, another um, nice aspect of these meters is that they can be purchased with um, an ATEX option so the different ATEX environments um, they can be catered for with the, uh, the transducers we, we see here. Um, other unique um, factors if you like about these meters is they very, have a very good turndown ratio so they can cover the extremes of flow very well um, particularly the small one being going down to 0.1 of a litre and having a maximum flow measurement of uh, 25 litres per minute. Right. The accuracy of these meters is um, significantly better than the average turbine meter um, and we are aiming for um, a meter accuracy in each device of 0.5% of indicated reading um, and the transducers you see on the top of these they uh, incorporate a microprocessor which corrects the or linearizes the, um, the, the flow to give you a linear output relative to the oil flow. <coughs> the customer doesn't have to do anything, they mm. just take that signal. Well that's the advantage of having a microprocessor linearization built into the transducer. Um, all the calibration points are programmed into the transducer, the customer then just connects it up to their device, a handheld unit, PLC unit, just puts in a zero point and a full scale point for flow. Uh, relative to the the output type and um, that's it it's linearized between those two points um, so it gives you the very good accuracy of 0.5 percent or at least anyway um, and the pressure rating of these devices well we're obviously aiming for the uh, high pressure hydraulics market uh, mobile hydraulics market um, so we're aiming to achieve a pressure rating for these of uh, at least 400 bar 6,000 psi yeah 